Welcome to Empowerment Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Friedman. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Well, we are living in very interesting times, and there is no coincidence in the fact that so many people are feeling anxious and afraid and stressed out because most of us feel confused. These are somehow times where old norms and values don't any longer seem to count. There is a very blurriness now between what is right or wrong, what is true and what is a lie. That sense of what's in it for me, that maybe ego or greed seems to more and more govern many people's actions and that other sense of just thinking about compassion and making a contribution to the well-being of all of us gets pushed to the wayside. Our planet is struggling. Just with everything that is happening, global warming, fires in the Amazon and so on, we are feeling that everything is just accelerating and going into the direction that no one of us really wants to. Chaos seems to be more the norm than that calm stability. And at the same time, there is also a growing desire in so many people to see a higher truth in everything that's happening and to find a truth in ourselves that we can hold on to, that is a, a governing force, a guiding force that helps us to navigate through those very fast and somehow chaotic times. But how do we connect to that divine truth, as some call it? How can we connect to that, what inside of us knows, just knows what is right, sees the bigger purpose and that higher perspective and allows us therefore to be at peace with no matter what we are experiencing around us, allows us to let go more of the negativity or the judgment or the fear, allows us to live more in freedom and in alignment with that purpose that we are here to express and share with the world. How do we tap into this truth? A lot of people are looking for answers. They don't feel that they want to go back to the religions they grew up with, but they don't also know really where else to look for a guidance to get to that truth, to get to that inner knowingness. Well, today I have a guest that can help you with that. And my guest is a world-renowned channel, Paul Selig, who is not only an incredible, clear uh, teacher of those informations that he gets from his guides, but he's also incredibly humble. The way he's teaching is really as a way of letting him be the conduit, letting him be the one that is just expressing what he's told we all need to hear, but at the same time also still admitting that he is still struggling like all of us with that same conflict of that small self and that divine truth. And he has written many books and all of those books have just a wonderful not only way of explaining what's going on inside of us and around us and making sense of it, but his books also have a certain kind of energy, a vibration and uh, make you just feel so much more calm and much more in alignment with yourself as you are going through those pages. So I am so happy Paul is here and he will hopefully help us to get more answers to those pressing questions that many of us may right now be struggling with. Well, welcome, Paul, to Empowerment Radio. Thank you so much for being on the show today. Thanks for having me. Well, Paul, I know many people know you, and some may not. Can you tell us a little bit more about you and your journey? Well, I work now as a conscious channel. I was a, a college teacher uh, for many, many years. Um, when I was 25, I had a, a bit of an awakening to 
the possibility of spirit. I had a, an experience with energy that I, I still can't quite explain. Um, I ended up studying a form of energy healing eventually to get a context for what I was beginning to open up to spiritually, psychically. And um, I found that when I had my hands on people's bodies, I began to hear things for them, which was the opening to clear audience. And, you know, while I was having this other life teaching, I was doing a group that met in my apartment for about 18 years. And I began to open there as a channel. And in, I would say, 2008, um, after I quit smoking, which was sort of my big last vice, the guides began lecturing through me. Um, and all I knew was that I was talking more. I wasn't really very interested in the information that was coming through me. I was interested in the energy, which was extremely palpable and exciting to be in. Um, but once I began willing to, you know, record the lectures that were coming through me and transcribe them, they began doing books. So they've now published seven of them. There's an eight book that's completed and will be out next year. And they've been bringing through a series of texts, and the texts are all the unedited transcripts of these lectures in book form. The guides say, this is a book, this is in the book, this is the chapter of the, of the book, this is the title of the book, and that's, then they just deliver it. And so that's what I do now. I left my academic life, and I travel around the world, and I, I sit in a chair, I close my eyes, and I take dictation, and the guides I work with the tune the students to the energies that come through and get them working, I suspect, in the expectation that they can then align at that level and begin to do the work with the energy themselves. Now, when you are channeling, who are you channeling? Who are they? Well, I mean, I call them the guides, and they're only called the guides because years ago when my ex found out I could do this because I've been keeping it sort of a secret, my ex used to say, ask the guides this, ask the guides that, so they became the guide because it was convenient, and now people call them that. They're teachers. Um, the name that's been given in some of the books and the name that I've heard is the name Melchizedek, um, or, you know, the high priest I heard early on when I was first beginning to open the priest and the high priest and the other name. But, you know, that's a priesthood. <clears throat> and truthfully, I don't put tremendous emphasis on the names because that tends to get very caught up in narrative and ego and things like that. And truthfully, I understand them as the teachers that work through me um, in a very loving and very direct way. Um, so it's a group. It's a collective, although the one that I've seen or the primary one that I've, I've seen in, in, in meditation or under hypnosis, and it looks the same. I mean, he's a very specific, amazing looking being. Um, and that's the energy I feel the most comfortable with and I've come to trust it over the years. How does it look like? Well, you know, I'll tell you the story. I was actually getting hypnotized and having nothing to do with this, uh, this work. And the person who was hypnotizing me knew the work. And halfway through the hypnosis said, and now your guide is going to come in. And I'm thinking, what? And sure enough, there was a being sitting next to me on a bench. And he, you know, had a big, big hat. That's what I remember the most, with a bit of a peak. And then a cone that went up straight. And then something sort of that rested on the top of it. It's a little like what you might see in a Greek Orthodox, you know. Ah, yes. It was different, but it was different. And, and a robe, and he, was, and he had a long beard, long white beard, and deep, deep, I mean, very pale, but very deep blue eyes, you know, that just looked with such love and compassion and care. And I've actually been told because there's something that the guides do where they step into me when I work and they work with people is that my eyes turn bright blue at times when I work pretty frequently when I do certain things. And I don't have, I mean, I have hazel eyes, I have dark eyes. So I find that interesting. Um, you know, and he was holding a scepter of some kind. It had uh, hieroglyphics that were raised. It was solid gold, that I knew, but the, at least it seemed to be the metal was gold and it had these hieroglyphics that were raised and he was showing it to me and I heard him say, 
This is what we use to attune people. And at the time, I was bringing through this attunement that I didn't understand. It was brand new. And I had been walking around with my hands raised in front of me for the first time when they were doing this attunement. And then I realized that's what I'd been holding, you know, in the etheric, holding that wow. wand or scepter or whatever it was. So that was the first experience. There have been a couple of others with him. Um, but that's how he appears to me consistently. So there is a connection to Egypt? No, not necessarily. There could well be. I don't know that the hieroglyphics, hieroglyphics were Egyptian. In fact, I remember thinking, I don't know where this is from. I kept thinking it's not Egyptian. I was wondering if it was Babylonian or something. I mean, it was like I was thinking this is from some other, I don't know. I mean, I don't, I'm not a good new ager. I don't know much about you know, Atlantis, Lemuria, all these things, who knows, you know, all I knew was it was something I had never seen. Um, and I was given an explanation for something that I was already doing, which I didn't understand. And that was helpful for me at the time. I don't do that attunement anymore. They've incorporated that attunement where I was holding that thing in others um, that have come subsequently. So. Now, one of the things that. I really love about your books is that there is an energy to it. It's yeah. not just the words, it's really what's between the words. It's what's yeah. transmitted. And uh, so you read your, your pages and the teachings that come through and, and there's something subconscious happening. There's something in your energy body happening as you're reading it, which is an additional layer to the words. Well, I think it's the real book. The guides have said from the very beginning that the books are operating on two levels. There are the words on the page, which provide a context for the reader, but that the real book is the energy that informs the book. And um, that's been the case from the very beginning. I think it was the very first book, I Am the Word, which was published in 2010, I think. They said, you know, this is less a book to be read than to be experienced. And there's a passage that you incur through the reading of the book. And um, I find it very interesting. And it's, you know, when I channel the energies in the room, you know, and people can feel it and people can begin to work with it. And the guides say the books are operating in the exact same way. So people are having these large experiences with the energy. I hear about them all the time. And when you read the reviews on Amazon, people are saying, I'm reading this book and my body's vibrating. You know, I'm reading this book, I'm seeing auras, these things. There's phenomena attached and yeah. has been. And I'm glad because I'm not always going to be here, but, you know, the books are around. And when you, you know, one of the reasons why I read your books is also about that, that gist of searching for your divine truth. And one of those aspects that I love about your book is even though sometimes, you know, you read the pages and you understand what it's said, but I think it also vibrates on that level of that deeper truth that mm -hmm. emerges as you're reading. So after the break, I want to talk more about what that means, divine truth, that essence, mm -hmm. and what can we do uh, according to the teachings to get closer to that. So we will be right back. Thank you.